Welcome back to the channel, my fellow gearheads and hot rodders. It's Blue Oval Dude here, and today we're just going to go over um, a quick recap of the flow numbers and the heads and where that is sitting right now. Um, obviously, you can see that we have the heads bolted onto the Windsor. We've got our valve train in there, and all that's done. Uh, valves are set. Uh, we've got our uh, Extreme Duty Crower. Uh, roller lifters and our 8.450 inch uh, push rods in there. Uh, there's a lot of things that I did to this engine that I didn't do videos on. Uh, you know, there's just so many things to cover on this. I don't know, you know, what what uh, is going to help people out. So I just some of the things I just glossed over and just got it done um, and moved on. So anyway. We're here to talk to flow numbers. That's the main thing today. So here we go. And um, I'll say about these heads, um, now that I've done a lot of work with them uh, and worked on them, um, I'm going to say that there's some of the shapes uh, they could have cast a little bit differently. Um, you know, it would have worked out better, but. Um, you know, for what they are and the price point that they are, it's, it's you know, really pretty decent. Um, this would compare like a out of the box. Um, you know, this is going to be better than uh, uh, GT40X. Or this is going to be comparable, like if it was a Chevy head, it's going to be, it's going to be better than an Iron Eagle 200. Or like a Blueprint... Um, aluminum uh, small block Chevy head this is going to be comparable to that out of the box uh, and actually cheaper than that so it's you know it's pretty decent we've talked about that a little bit so that being said uh, when I worked on these heads uh, you know I had the idea that I'm gonna go ahead and do the work to them that basically uh, anyone else should be able to replicate in their garage with, um, you know, if they had enough uh, knowledge and experience to be able to, you know, replicate this, um, not using a flow bench in order to uh, find out where the weak spots are and where you can improve them. So basically just a budget port job that uh, anyone else should be able to do in their garage, uh, you know, if they have that. Um, of course, there is improvements that can be done to these, um, but right now I would say where they're at, I would say that they're going to need to go and spend some time on the flow bench and do some work to those areas and on and off and, and uh, you know, kind of work those areas where they're a little bit weaker, um, but that's going to take time and money in order to do that and, you know, Obviously, people normally don't have a flow bench uh, to their access, so kind of that's where that's at. So I would say, yes, these can be better than where they are. So let's talk about where they are and uh, just kind of um, how these worked out. So, all right, here we go. We got the numbers here, and... Remember, up here is our out of the box where they came out when we tested them. So 120 at 2, 171 at 3, 219, 243, topped out at 252 at 600. So pretty solid head out of the box on the intake side. We both, we've talked about this in the past. The exhaust side left some to be desired, but the intake side was, wasn't really that bad. Um, so anyway, our new ported numbers, we were at 120, now we're still at 120 at 2, 171, and I didn't expect this to pick up very much on the lower side of it, uh, 171, 177 now at 3, and then we were at 219 at 4, and now we're at 220.5, so already down here on the intake side at 300, we're already better than a stock head. So uh, the only one that's going to be better than this would be 
a P head would be a little better than this. But still we're, you know, at 300 thousandths, we're <laughs> right up in that range. And over here at four, yeah, we're spanking it. And then at 500 thousandths, we were at 243. Now we're at 256. So that's 13 CFM better right there at five. And at 600 thousandths, we were at 252. And that's where it topped out at, at 600 thousandths. It didn't get any better. And now we're at 273 at 600. And this is kind of what I expected, this upper range, you know, about from 500 up to, uh, you know, pick up quite a bit of CFM in that area. And then at 700 thousandths, of course, we were at 252 out of the box. Now we're at 280.5. So we are 28.5. CFM better than we were out of the box. So by the intake numbers uh, out of the box before, we can see that we could, uh, it was possible to make over 500 horsepower out of the box. And now we can see that it's possible to make, you know, close to that 600 horsepower range uh, with this engine. So, quite a bit of improvement there on the intake side. Quite a bit. So now, let's go ahead and take the exhaust side, which is where it was the weakest before. And let's take a look at that. There's our original figures oh, from out of the box. And... Here we go. Um, let's see. The exhaust out of the box right there where that E is. That it was 110, 141, 163, and then 166, and that was it. And that was the end of it. All right. So pretty much at four, it was almost done, 163. So we were at 110 at 2 out of, out of the box. Now we're at 116. We we're at 141 at 300. Or maybe I can move this up there. You can see that. We're at 141 out of the box. Now we're at 163. And this is really where I wanted to improve the most was the exhaust portion. Uh, so right there, that's 22 CFM at 300 thousandths. At 400 thousandths, we're, we're almost at 200 CFM already at 400 thousandths at the new levels. Before, we were at 163. Now we're at 196. So it reaches these numbers nice and fast. So it'll have lots of time to, to move that exhaust. At 500, we did 201. And before we were at 166, which was the top point before, now we're at 201, so that is 35 CFM roughly. 35 CFM better now that it's ported compared to what it was out of the box. And that was pretty much the top point for it. It was the top point for it, not even pretty much. Uh, before it did 166 and 166 at 7 also. Now we're at 197 and 196. So pretty much just topped out about 500 thousandths uh, now. But instead of 166, it sits right around 200 CFM. So, you know, that's a very large improvement over what it was. Um, like I said before, I know this head has more left in it, but it's kind of reached the point right now where as far as budget goes, you're going to have to start spending some money in order to get more uh, airflow out of this. You know, more time on the flow bench. And, you know, also if you, like, you know, switch the, in the valves on this uh, to a different style, you could get some more flow out of that, but that's going to cost money too. So I would say for the average guy who doesn't have a flow bench and doesn't isn't going to spend any more money, um, you should be able to achieve these kind of numbers out of it which is pretty solid, you know. Um, so I, my idea on this exhaust and what I did here is I wanted to 
have room to grow uh, for the future for this thing. So um, kind of undecided where this is going to go, what I'm going to do with this um, at a later time. But as far as right now, this is where it's going. Obviously, they're bolted on the engine. We're going to run it like this. And we're going to dyno it. We're going to have some fun with it. So, it's kind of my idea. My idea here is maybe, maybe I'm going to put a stroker kit in this at some time. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll put some boost on it. Maybe we'll throw some nitrous at it. I did put enough ring gap so we can do those things uh, when I put it together, it, obviously except for the stroker kit, <laughs> which would be different rotating assembly. But the idea was I want enough exhaust flow and size to be able to, to support uh, those kind of things and uh, where it would be fairly easy to improve on where most of the hard work is already done. So that's my idea on that. So, um, coming up on my um, future episodes, it's going to be happening, you know, in the near future. We're going to be uh, showing you, I'm going to talk about port matching, because I port match the intake for this. That's already done. Uh, I've just got a part here, so I can show you what I did. Um, in one of my upcoming videos, uh, rather than gasket matching, which is an incorrect way to port your intake manifold. Gasket matching is not the right thing to do for your intake. I'm just I'm going to lay that out for you right now. Port matching is the thing you should be doing to your intake manifold if you want to improve that. And I'm going to explain that in that upcoming video and show you how to do it. Um, also, we'll go over the parts list on this. And uh, like I was saying before, um, obviously this thing is gonna be going on the dyno. Kinda had some waiting time for that. You know, they keep laying me back on that, the whole COVID thing. And But I really wanna be in there and do some dyno videos. And I'm hoping I can do some, um, a little bit of part swapping and uh, do some comparisons. I, we'll see how that works out and see what I can get done. But uh, that's what I would like to do anyway. So I guess until next time, remember to hit that like, share, subscribe, keep wrenching, keep working on your hot rods, keep racing, keep having fun with them.